In this video, we're going to look at all of the different controls that we have in the Virtual Tape Machines plugin, and we'll start right up the middle with the VU meters. These display the level of the audio signal coming into the plugin after the input stage. So we look to the input stage to determine the amount of gain that's being added coming into the tape after our audio signal. These VU meters display left on the top and right on the bottom, and they have an individual level here that ends in zero and goes to plus three decibels with a little red light that indicates clipping. To the right of that, we see the output knob. This is how much gain is being added or taken away after the VU meter stage. So when the input and output knobs are balanced, we're only adding tape effect and not volume. Plus 8.9 here and minus 8.9 here equals the same audio level, but the processing of the internal tape effects. Just above each of the input and output knobs, there's a little chain icon that denotes stereo linking. And clicking it on either side is going to link these knobs so that they are perpetually balanced. If it's black, then when I turn the input knob down, the output knob goes up. This is to make sure that the level is always balanced. If I want an imbalance, say I want to drive the tape super hard on the input, I turn off the linking and turn up the input. Something to note here is that when I do click link again, it's going to snap the other knob, not the one that I just turned, into position to be balanced with the knob that I just adjusted. To the right of these input and output gain settings, we see the actual tape settings. We have controls for bias, machine type, tape type, and speed. Each of them is an adjustable position switch that we adjust simply by clicking on it or by clicking the value that we want to go directly to. Bias is going to adjust some frequency dependent saturation dynamics that we'll discuss in depth in a later video. Machine type changes the type of tape machine that this plugin is emulating. We can go from a two inch 16 track type tape recorder or a half inch two track mastering tape recorder. We have two different tape types, FG456 and FG9 that we will also discuss in depth later and two tape speeds at 15 and 30 IPS. Each of these controls is dependent on the other controls because virtual tape machines really operates under the idea that we're completely switching up the equipment. When we turn from a two inch 16 track to a half inch mastering two track, it's a completely different machine that will respond to the adjustments in speed, bias, and tape type in different ways than the other tape machine. And the same goes for the tapes. They should sound different in the different tape machines, and their dynamics should change when we adjust the speed. And Slate Digital has done an awesome job of making all of these interesting fundamental properties of tape machines come into play in a really natural way. Moving to the left side of the front panel, we see some other settings here, one for process and bypass. On bypass mode, the plugin is not affecting the audio at all. When I turn on process, that's when we start to initiate the tape machine. It's processing our signal. And the VU meters light up instantaneously to let us know that the plugin is active. And this is separate from any bypass setting that you might have in your DAW of choice. We also have the group settings, which right now is set to ungrouped. By clicking on this, I reveal the group menu, something that we'll discuss in depth later. By clicking on the Slate Digital logo, I bring up the info panel in case you need that. And here, we get access to the calibration settings. On the left, we have settings for noise reduction because all tape machines have an internal saturation to noise ratio. We can adjust this noise if we don't want that tape hiss. We have an option for wow and flutter. And this attempts to emulate the type of pitch modulation and compression effects that happen as a tape machine moves across the record head. We have a switch for hiss automate, which will automatically turn off the hiss when no signal is coming through the plugin. We can also adjust the base alignment from a scale of negative six decibels to plus three decibels. In the middle here, we have our calibration levels. Each of the eight groups has an individual calibration level as well as a global calibration level. Each of the groups also has a red LED to adjust it to be independent from the signal or to be relative to the global level. Now we'll discuss this relationship further when we understand more about the signal path of this particular plugin. To the right, we see a VU ballistics response switch. 
This is going to adjust how the VU meter responds visually to the audio that's coming into it. We want its response to be fast, medium, or slow. Next, we can change the default group for newly created instances of the plugin. If I set this to group one, the next instance of VTM that I bring up on a different channel is going to be automatically set to group one. So now that we know a little bit more about the various controls available to us, and we're able to identify all of them, let's move along to learning more about what each of these controls does to our sound. Thanks for watching.